Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. Um, I'm with uh, Richard Blundell and we're going to be talking about um, his book or his co-authored book, The Go-To-Market Handbook for B2B Sales Leaders, SaaS Leaders, sorry. Uh, great book, Richard. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and I hope you don't mind me. Um, you also recommend The Mum's Test in the book as well, which is also a very good book. It is. Um, and yeah. um, But we're going to be talking about, um, yes, <laughs> um, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, this today. Yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, where can people find you? Uh, well, I'm on LinkedIn and I fortunately enough joined LinkedIn uh, early enough to just be Richard Blundell on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn forward slash Richard Blundell. Um, our consultancy is called Venture, V-E-N-C-H-A. So we're at venture.team is our website um, or Richard at venture.team is my direct email address. So yeah, get in contact anytime. Okay, thank you. And um, your um, a shout out also for your co-authors, Paul Watson and uh, Chris Topman. And yes. you've been working them, in my notes, it says for something like working with them on and off for something like 28 years. Yes, um, we started in 1995. We were originally uh, in the financial services industry. We were selling life and pensions to rich people in the city. And then we started selling to uh, corporates, um, so businesses, company pension schemes and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then when the first dot-com boom came around in sort of 1999, we felt like we ought to be on that train. Uh, and we created our first SaaS product together. I mean, you call it SaaS now. It probably wasn't called SaaS back then. Um, but it was in the HR space where we linked uh, HR and payroll uh, businesses up with insurance company providers, um, really with the initial vision of providing more visibility um, over uh, your employee benefits package, a total reward statement. Um, and as it says in the book, in the first workbook, that was the biggest lesson we ever learned when we realized we got our value proposition wrong. And actually mm. benefits administration was what the pain was and benefits visibility was just a nice to have. So yeah, the three of us have been best friends for 28 years. Um, we've worked on and off for all that time. And uh, four years ago, uh, we got back together again to create Venture, which is a, a growth consultancy that helps B2B SaaS businesses become the best version of themselves. So, I mean, you actually going to the book. It's it's interesting because you you one of the things that you talk about in the book is the fact that you you were selling this um, product that was your um, uh, value proposition. Yeah. And then one of the customers said, "Well, yeah, it's really interesting, but actually, it yeah. does this for us." Yes. I mean, it was a miracle. I mean, would we have got there eventually? Probably. Um, but we'd gone through three quarters of our marketing budget, most of our sales budget. And we'd fallen into the biggest man trap that I personally believe um, most SaaS businesses fall into. And that is not testing their thesis enough. You know, we are, we are the only industry in the world in software who seem to th think it's all right to go to market without actually testing whether what we've created is valuable, painful, uh, useful. Uh, is it, it Does it solve a pain that customers recognize? Is it a 3 a.m. stare at the ceiling pain? Is it... Um, is it a pain that actually matches up to our buying personas objectives? Um, we just create software and we did it, right? So we, we fell into our own, you know, our own biggest man trap. We created a software package thinking we knew more than our clients did about what was broken in their organization and went to market and discovered that no one was saying yes, because what we were selling was a, you know, wasn't, wasn't painful enough. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was a very lucky lesson that we learned very early on. Had, I think had we not heard it then, the business would have been in real trouble. Uh, having heard it and pivoted immediately, um, we picked up Tyco, Hasbro, Walt Disney yep. Corporation, London Stock Exchange and others as clients. So yeah, it was a, it was a you know, very lucky break. So so using that that experience, all yep. three of you, what you've done is is in effect, and I mean, it's it's it explains it on the front. It's mm. a go to market handbook for B2B SaaS leaders. So you, yeah. you created, um, it's 11 workbooks, isn't it? It's um, 10. It's actually 10. It's 10 plus one. You want 10, yeah, plus an intro. <laughs> yeah, um, and and you, 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 you work, you work us through yeah. the 10. So, so first and foremost, it's reconfirming your value proposition. Yes. And, and that is, and you use that term an awful lot during the book, which is, yeah. is it, will, will the customer be staring at the ceiling at three o'clock in the morning saying how am i going to solve this problem because if you're not, if it's not that yes it's nice to have you won't get anywhere exactly we need to find out what that internal monologue is of our customers what you know what 
are, you know, what are they thinking? Are they thinking, why is this process so broken on my watch, in my department, in my organization? You know, we're, we're better than this. We, you know, we're a great business. And yet in my department, there's a process that means we can't get our products to market quicker, quickly enough, or we don't have any visibility over our data, or uh, conflict is being caused within my business. And if I sit in one more one-to-one -one with a member of my team complaining about how bad um, the, this process is in the organization, uh, I'm going to scream. So we need to find out what that internal monologue is and make sure that the solution that we've created absolutely maps to that. Because if it doesn't, um, you know, it's going to bounce off. I think I talk about it in another, uh, in another presentation. It's a bit like a, um, you know, space shuttle returning, you know, returning to Earth. If you come in too flat with your value prop, you know, you'll just bounce off and it won't resonate. And if you come in too steep, you'll just burn up. That, that line of trajectory is absolutely crucial. Um, and customer pain needs to, to map completely to, um, to what it, that 3 a.m. stare at the ceiling pain is. And if it does, you really are onto a winner because you'll find that the customers will do all they can to help you uh, install your software or have your software accepted by their organization because it, it answers very real, visceral pain uh, for them and for their business. Mm. And then you talk about, you then go on about testing the thesis, which is where this book comes in, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I read that, someone shoved that the mum test in front of me, uh, and I, I've never met Rob Fitzpatrick. I've read two of his books. Uh, both his books are on my desk, one of which is the mum test. The other one is, is write useful books. Um, I've never met Rob. I've never communicated with him, but he, um, uh, someone shoved the mum test in front of me very early on, um, yeah. and it's brilliant because if you look at the heading of the mum test, I mean, A, how, 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 to, you know, how to create a brilliant headline, which is called the mum test, how to talk to customers and learn if your business is a good idea when everybody is lying to you. Um, and that's exactly what um, uh, the mum test is all about. If you go and ask your mum whether your software product's a good idea, she'll say, of course, darling, it's right. wonderful, well done, have 50,000 pounds of your inheritance and go and set up a business. But we need to ask better questions than that. We need to ask questions like, um, is, is there money in your budget this year to solve this problem? Um, has the organization put solving this problem into your objectives in the next 12 months? If the answer to those two questions is no and no, we may need to think about a different tack because they're not planning to improve what you would like them to improve in the next 12 months. Now, it's not to say the deal is over, but it is to say we need to come in at a different trajectory and just you know, really find out what it is that, that is causing them problems. Um, and that's what we go into in the second workbook, the testing your thesis concept where we find five or ten buying personas and we test and we ask them to be honest we're not allowed to lead the witness we create a really compelling question set that draws out of them whether what we've got is is actually on their radar right now um and what we invariably find is well thankfully mostly it's like yes we absolutely recognize this pain oh and by the way you've missed a bit in your visualization you know add that bit on um, but what we've also found is people go, yeah, no, yes, I can see where you're coming at, but actually our big problem is the data. You know, we can't get accurate data. And if you can solve that problem as well, you go, oh, okay, well, brilliant. And then on the next testing call, you highlight the data as being the problem yep. and you run through the process again until you refine this thing. Um, and what would make your investors more confident or your team more confident than watching five, 10 videos, because we record these, these, um, these testing sessions, showing buying personas, actively saying to you, if you can fix this for me, I will be very interested in your solution or I will buy your solution. Um, and it's that kind of evidence that we're looking for in software. And if you don't get it, it's got to be much better not to proceed and burn through your inheritance and your friend's money and your family's money and investors' money if what you're selling just isn't painful enough, isn't solving enough pain. Yeah, because because Rob, I mean, this is a great book because you can yeah. read it in a weekend. But what yeah. one of the things that Rob says is that fi that, that finding no yes. is going to save you a lot of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we'd gone to see Volkswagen and to go back to our original story and said, you know, what's broken in your world? You know, what 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 hurts in administration? He'd have said, well, it's the administration of it because I've got three people who spend three days every month adding joiners, taking off levers, putting in pay rises, putting in holidays. 
Um, and that's when he came out with the immortal line. You know, I, I don't know why you sell the front end. You should sell the back end because your solution means I only need a third of a person, you know, one person to work a third of a day to to do the same process. And that is gold dust to him. You know, speed, um, the, 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 the team can be put to higher value tasks. Um, he's got a happy team who aren't sitting there plowing through spreadsheets and, you know, almost like crossing people out of a phone directory when they've died. You know, that, that's what they were doing. And with our platform, they, they didn't need to do that anymore. So he'd have told us that if we just had the courage to go and ask them. So um, the, the fourth, uh, sorry, the third workbook is about defining your ideal customer. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that quite often we, we sit in our little ivory tower, don't we, and, and think about and think about this, but don't really get down to the details. Don't, don't get to the nub of the problem. Yes. And I think um, the term ICP has been chucked around and yeah. you know, it's fairly hackneyed now. You know, that is ideal customer profile. But yeah. what Paul and I do when we work with companies is define the perfect customer. What does the absolute middle pixel of the dartboard perfect customer look like? And, and what will go into that calculation will be size of organization, geography, um, but, but, but also things like speed to value. You know, have you found that with a certain vertical, they get value from your products, you know, much faster than, than others? That would be a perfect customer. You know, what's the situation that they're in today that would make them, uh, would, would, would make them perfect? Are, are they using a competitor's platform, which is rubbish, and your system's, you know, 20 years more modern, uh, and that makes them a perfect customer? So it's not ideal because everyone, ideal customer, it's absolutely niche narrow. We use the phrase uncomfortably narrow. Yes. We would like to find two, three, 400 companies that you would define are your perfect, perfect customer. Um, and we're only going to focus on them. They're the top right of our go-to-market, product-market fit. We're just going to spend all our marketing money on those organizations. It's not to say others won't come to us that are outside of that and they'll respond to our marketing. But all of our focus is going to be on lighting up and making ourselves famous in those two, three, four hundred customers and no more. Because out of that, and you see in the book, we do a whole, I do a whole math calculation in terms of how many we need to close against a certain close rate. Mm -hmm. Out of that, you'll find the 25 to 50 customers you need to do the next 1 million of ARR, which makes everybody happy, right? It makes your investors happy. It makes your team happy. It makes you happy. It takes the pressure off. So yeah, perfect customer, not ideal. And there is a difference. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I really feel that um, because we're not, I think that the, we have a tendency, don't we, to go, okay, well, the market is this big. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to market for, for everything on the basis that, because we've known in the past that what we have to do, well, well, the way that we've marketed in the past is we need to throw mud at the wall and hope it will stick. Yes. And I'll tell you what causes that, um, if people are wondering what causes it. It's because we spend all our time raising money with investors and we and we obsess about the TAM and the and the SAM and the SOM and the target um target addressable market. TAM. Yeah, total addressable market, service addressable market, service achievable market. So you know we spend all this time saying our opportunity is billions, it's global, it's massive, it's magnificent, and 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 the investors go, oh wow, that's exciting. And if they believe in you, they'll invest in you. And if they don't, they won't. But if they do believe in you, and you then go back to the office, and I know this sounds counterintuitive. But particularly in the early stages, or if the business has gone a bit flat and the air's gone out of the tires, you need to forget all of that, to forget the global market and world domination and, you know, Alexander the Great and you know, the sun will never set on my empire. We should just be thinking, right, get narrow. Who are the next 25? Who are the next 50? Who are the next 100? And to do that, you need to build a list of about 400 absolutely perfect customers and, and if you've done your testing right and 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 your customers agree that they have this pain and they have this problem then your challenge is is, is now only a marketing one because you know it's broken you know it's they're, they're all talking to each other and there's another theme we talk about a lot really which is all of our ideal buying personas or perfect buying personas are on a WhatsApp channel of peers, right? They've been to an event, they've 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 written something, they've they collaborated on a podcast, they've done a blog together, or they just like to keep each other up to date with what's happening around. That WhatsApp channel is gold dust to us. So if we can get 25 customers and we successfully implement them, not delighted customers, we successfully implement them. I All the integrations work. It doesn't take nine months to set up. It's a very fast, very quick setup. They get value from it very quickly. We assess which 
you know, products that uh, parts of the uh, the product they really like, the dashboarding or whatever. And if they then share your website on that, it's what we call dark social, but on that WhatsApp channel, yep. that is the Nirvana because the, the next 25, the next 25 customers after this first 25 will come at you very, very, very quickly. So yeah, get, get your investor brain off and forget it and leave it till the next time you need to raise money and just get really, really narrow and, and really tight and focus on those perfect customers because you've proven they're in pain. You know they're in pain. You just need to market to them now to light up and say, we've got the, we've got the solution. Fantastic. And um, so that brings us on to workbook four, which is building your market map. Yeah. And this is probably slightly different. Um, I mean, in the book, uh, I, I, you know, what I love about the mum test, apart from the fact it's brilliant and it just has, uh, it just, you know, it's so valuable and so useful. I use it all the time. It's on my desk. Is that it's 100 pages long, right? Yes. So he's had a great idea and he's only written 100 pages. And I think we got a bit tired of books that were 400 pages long that had a good idea in chapter one or chapter two and then spent eight more chapters just re reiterating. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them again. Tell them again. Tell them again. And then tell them. Yeah. So we wanted to cover a lot of distance, but quite thin. So we didn't want to, you know, just bore people with one idea. But we could have written a book about each of the workbooks, right? They're they're all they're yes. all subjects of uh, of of uh, of interest. And and I think the market map is is different because we all know what a market map is, and these are the perfect customers we're going to target. I think the nuance we put on it that's different is we actually create a Facebook, which is nothing to do with um, you know with the online uh, social channel. It's yep. literally 400 faces on a piece of paper or on a screen because I think you need to have visibility of the names and the people and the faces that are going to determine whether your software product succeeds or, or doesn't. Yep. It, it, you know, it's that simple. If, 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 if 50 people out of that 400 buy your products, your SaaS product is going to be a huge success. You'd have changed the world. You'd have left a dent in the universe. So I, you know, it, it started off with me putting logos of companies I wanted to talk to on the wall when I was a sales director. I just somehow felt if I put their logos up, they would come towards me. And it's now evolved into, and it sounds like creepy, but it's not. But it's just, I, I want you to, I want to know what they look like. I want to know who they are. I want to know what they're interested in. I need to know what they like. If they're a Fulham fan or a Man United fan or a cricket fan or uh, whatever, whatever they like, I want to know what, who they are because i need a hook in which to talk to them in i want to research them what are they interested in what are they writing about what are they blogging about customer intimacy is a real achilles heel of most most businesses actually but particularly in software we need to know these people intimately we need to empathize with them we need to understand their industry understand their world and, and that's why some of the greatest salesmen in the world are great empathizers rather than great you know communicators because yep. They spend time in, in empathizing. But yeah, workbook four is how to build your market map Facebook. I, I, I love it when you, you talk about actually producing the, the, the faces because it's a bit like it's a bit like an actor, isn't it? Where where you where you um, where the person, the actor is saying, so 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 what am I feeling? And um, yes. explain yes. to me yes. when this happened and, and you know, and, and that it's 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 about creating that 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 um, as you said, that Facebook. It's a very prescient thought, Tim. I hadn't thought about it that way in terms of acting. I mean, we thought about it in terms of sport, you know, how a 100-meter runner actually visualizes the, yeah. the hurdles before they go, or a, a Formula One driver does the same. And I think, you know, if you and your sales team cannot visualize the kind of people that you want to talk to uh, and really get, you know, remotely intimate with them and understand their world, then you've, you've got a problem. And, and, and if you can and you get to know them, they all know each other. They, they all know each other. You know, when I was a... A financial advisor i hated cold calling so i had to get very good at asking for referrals because i hated i was terrified of cold calling and so i did get good at referrals and that's where the sort of first you know the first uh, real growth uh, step for me came we've forgotten how to ask for referrals all the people on that facebook will know each other well you know they're all they might well have their mobile number on their phone so if you've done an amazing job for those first 25 they won't hesitate to recommend you to their colleagues because they want them to do well I, I agree. And, you know, if you're looking at um, um, regardless of whether they're competitors or whether they're um, whether they're friends, they'll still yeah. know each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's why we quite like when we do the testing, the thesis to go back to all of them at the end and say, 
can we show you what everybody else is saying? And just that gives them comfort of knowing other people in their, mm. in their vertical are suffering the same pain and actually finding a conjoined solution, particularly if you're selling somewhere like um, social housing or, you know, where they're very, very happy to share. It's all about doing well for, for everybody rather than well for themselves. Um, so, yeah, I mean, get on that WhatsApp channel, figure out that's your that's your Nirvana. That is your goal. That, that WhatsApp channel is the place that you want to get onto. And you'll only get onto it if you've delivered a phenomenal service. And they'll talk about it and people will come in and say, oh, yeah, I've seen them. They're great. They do. Da, 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 and, and you're off to the races. You know, they'll hit your website and you're off. Richard, the 20 minutes goes very, very quickly. Um, it's been fantastic. <laughs> fantastic talking to you yeah and, and i and i loved your book and i think it's a it's a it's a great read Thank um you. and i'm just making sure and um, so where can we find a copy of that uh, it's on amazon uh it's one of the best selling product management books on amazon now it's sold in 15 different countries uh, it's been a huge success we only launched in september but we're you know very close to four figures on on the sales and uh, it's on amazon and it's just had phenomenal feedback we're so pleased with it good good and and um and and Paul, I think, has has made a comment as well, which is good. Yeah. He's probably tuned in on LinkedIn. I connected the channels up, so uh, excellent. Yeah. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Richard, where can, where can people find you? Uh, so venture team v e n c h a or Richard at venture v e n c h a dot team or on LinkedIn, uh, which is just LinkedIn forward slash Richard Blundell. Richard, thank you so much for coming on and talking to thank us. Thank you for having me. It's been fabulous. It's gone too quick. It, it it does go to I could talk to you for an hour about <laughs> yeah, no, this easily, Richard, but nobody would watch it. No, I agree. I agree. Well, thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Really good to talk to you, Richard. Thank you so much for today.